Good morning, church family. It's time to begin our morning worship this morning. Grateful that you're here today and ready to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Please be sure and make a, a point to pick up one of our worship handouts uh, to find out what is happening here at West Freeway. Next Sunday morning, we want to pay particular attention because after our morning worship, we're going to have a fellowship meal here with hot dogs, buns, and drinks. We encourage you to come with sides, so bring uh, desserts, whatever you want to bring for that. And then the little ones are encouraged to bring their bikes, tricycles, and our wagons. We're going to have a 4th of July parade after our uh, fellowship meal on uh, Sunday. So look, looking forward to that. Looking forward to our worship this morning. Let's be standing for our first song. Brother Mike Tinius is coming now to lead us in our singing. I will sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me, how he left his home in glory for the cross of Calvary. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. I was lost, but Jesus found me, found the sheep that went astray. Threw his loving arms around me, threw me back into his way. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. He will keep me till the river flows its waters at my feet. Then he'll bear me safely over where the loved ones I shall meet. Yes, I'll sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. Sing it with the saints in glory gathered by the crystal sea. Be seated, please. Let's let the little ones come down while we sing this next song. Thank you for helping me sing already this morning. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. The lily of the valley, and him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow he's my comfort, in trouble he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Now, I pitched that a little too low. Let's go up a little bit. Kids, help me out. Oh, he all my griefs has taken and all my sorrows borne. In temptation, he's my strong and mighty power. I have all for him forsaken and all my idols torn from my heart. And now he keeps me by his power. Though all the world forsake me and Satan tempt me sore, through Jesus I shall safely reach the goal. He's the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousand to my soul. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you all this morning? One good? Two? You know, today is a special day. Can you guess what day it is today? Anybody know? 
Sunday. Uh, Sundays are very special, aren't they? We get to go worship God. That's that's true. It, that makes it special. What also makes today special? Anybody know? It's my birthday. Yes. I'm not going to have you all sing or anything, but I just wanted you to know that today was a special day. But, you know, God made all of us, and we all have birthdays, right? And God knew us even before we were made. Isn't that amazing? Before we were born, God knew us and had, and we had a relationship with God. That is something really special. And I'm thankful you were here today, and I, and I can see your smiling faces on my birthday. All right, let's sing a song. Y'all ready? Let's sing. Let's sing my favorite one. You ready? Building up the kingdom. All right. I think some of y'all's favorites too. Building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, brother, won't you help me? Sister, won't you help me? Building up the kingdom of the Lord. It's so high, you can't get over it. So low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get around it. Have to go through the door. Building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom, building up the kingdom of the Lord. Oh, brother, won't you help me? Sister, won't you help me? Building up the kingdom of the Lord. It's so high, you can't get over it. It's so low, you can't get under it. So wide, you can't get around it. Have to go through the door. Let's pray. Good job, guys. Thank you, God, so much for another day of life. Every day is a gift. Father, every day is special, especially a day each Sunday that we can come together to worship you as one body. Father, thank you so much for our children, and I pray a special blessing for all of them and their families. Be with us now as we continue to praise and worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good job, guys. Right. Thank you. We came to worship God today. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious Jew, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. When the dark powers have done their worst, Jesus brought victory from their curse. He is our all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name jesus lamb of god worthy is your name worthy is your name there is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest, near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet 
near to the heart of God, a place where sin our Savior meet, near to the heart of God. O Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release near to the heart of God, a place where all is joy and peace near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before thee, near to the heart of God. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this time we can be with our, our family here at West Freeway and we thank you for the time that the uh, that we have to hear your word spoken to us, the time that we have to sing to you, to talk to you in prayer, and especially the time that we have to uh, commune with you in the supper that we'll have in just a few minutes. Father, help us as we prepare for that time that we'll put everything of the world out of our minds. And Father, we know there's a lot of, a lot of stuff going on in the world. Uh, people want to make the immoral okay, and we know it's not. Father, help us to speak out against it when, it, when we have the chance. We ask you to bless our country as we're going through a lot of turmoil, and we ask you to turn the hearts of our fellow citizens to you, toward you, and Father, we ask that, that, you'll, that you will bless this country. We know, we know we're not what we should be, but we ask you to bless us to uh, turn back to you, Father. We thank you now for all the blessings you give us, especially for your son, Jesus, and it's in his name we pray, amen. perfect peace in this dark world of sin the blood of Jesus whispers peace within peace perfect peace by thronging duties press to do Verses 21 through 24. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in this body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, 
which is better by far, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing the thorns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and in delight. I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright. I'll sing with the glittering crown on my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. This time as we come together to commune with Christ and partake of the Lord's Supper, let's focus on what this means to us, what it will mean to us in the future as we live with Christ forever and God forever throughout eternity. Let's pray. God, we are so blessed. You have blessed us in so many ways. There's not a greater blessing, Father, that we focus on at this time, and that is that we can live with you forever because of the sacrifice of Jesus how he loved us so much, how you loved us so much and was willing to lay down his life for us. We rejoice in that, Father, and we thank you for that. This time, Father, help us to focus on this bread, the body of Christ. May we look back to that day, think about the suffering that he went through for us the great love that he had. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray again. God, as we consider this fruit of the vine, which is a symbol of the blood that Jesus gave, his lifeblood that took his life, help us to focus on what it means to us, the love he had for us, and that we can live with you forever because of that blood. In Jesus' name, amen.
this time we're going to uh, allow the opportunity to, to give back to the work here and give back to, to God and his work throughout the world. Let's pray. Father, again, we want to acknowledge you for the creation that you've given us, the blessings of this life, the physical blessings that you've blessed all of us with. And, and we pray, Father, that we will give back based on how you've blessed us. And also, Father, help us to focus on the spiritual blessings at this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give me the heart of a servant, tender and faithful and true. Fill me with love and use me, O Lord, so that the world can see you. Oh, give me the heart of a servant, tender and faithful and true. Fill me with love and use me, O Lord, so that the world can see you. The world can see you. Didn't get that in there fast enough, did I? You know, this next song has special meaning for some folks. And all of us can sing it knowing that he hears us and that he loves us. So let's sing it to him. Let's stand and sing. Fairest Lord Jesus, ruler of all nature, oh, thou of God and man the Son, thee will I cherish, thee will I honor, thou my soul's glory, joy. seated please so grateful for your presence today and especially want to acknowledge our visitors who are visiting with us today as I went around the auditorium I met a couple who are here from Waco today we're glad that you're here uh, some folks from Bangs Texas <laughs> Now, you know, have you heard where Bangs is out near Brownwood? Gene Sykes' his sisters are here today. <laughs> I always, Gene, I always remember Charlie talking about Bangs, Texas. So we're glad that they're here today. And others who are here today, we're glad that you are visiting with us. We want to encourage you to come back and be with us every opportunity that you have. We want to also recognize this morning, Dicey, and I'm hoping I pronounce your last name correctly, Rolls. Uh, who has been coming with uh, 
Melinda and Jerry for the last few weeks. Live, I believe, in the same apartment complex they do. Wants to identify herself here at West Freeway, so we're glad that Dicey is making that decision. He is my everything. That's what the Apostle Paul is speaking regarding the church at Philippi and the attitude that he is encouraging the church to be in. You know, Paul wrote a number of letters that we find in the New Testament uh, Scripture. Many of the ch those churches had difficulties and trials and problems. But oftentimes, Paul would give some positives of the works that were going on in these congregations. Would help to turn it on. There we go. The book of Philippians, if you've ever sat down to read it from chapter 1 to the end, is a book that is overflowing with great joy. Paul writes to the church thanking the Philippian brethren for a great gift that he received. And with what Paul tells the church in this book, he shares a great little secret. The secret of contentment. Not happiness or joy, although we would love to have that. God encourages us to have that. But Paul was simply saying in this book, in all things, he was content with the state that he was in. There are four chapters to this book, and in these four chapters are some, some great jewels, some great powerful messages, some great lessons that are taught us. I want us to quickly examine the book of Philippians this morning through these four chapters, through these four points that Paul makes about Christ in the book of Philippians. The first thing that I would like to suggest to you this morning is this, that Paul teaches us in the book of Philippians through chapter 1, verses 21 through 24, that Jesus Christ was his purpose and that Jesus Christ is our purpose. Look at the, the, the book this morning, if you have your Bibles open or you have it on your, your app uh, to look at that. Look at chapter 1, beginning at verse 21. For the Apostle Paul says, what, beginning in verse 21, starting actually in verse 19, he says, yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Verse 20, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. Now, look at the key in verse 21. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. For if I'm in the, to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Paul is saying here, the Lord is my life. The Lord is my purpose in life. You look at how crazy our world is, and this is not a political forum. Please understand that. But some of the things that took place this past week has made our world a little crazier place to live in. And John, the writer of the Revelation, saw that very same thing. As he closes out the book of Revelation, what does he say? Even so come, Lord Jesus. There he was. No, he was not one of the apostles that died a horrific death. He was exiled to an isle called Patmos. But John saw what was going on with the church and the persecution of the church by the Romans, by the Jews, and others during that time. 
and he wanted a better place to be in. Everyone in this room desires a better place, do you not? And that place is called heaven. But for the time being, Paul is saying that while I'm here on this earth, and though I wish to be with you, Lord, I have a purpose here on this earth, and that is to serve you. I have a purpose here on this earth to live for you and to show others the life of Christ. Therefore, Paul said, Lord, you shall be my purpose in this life until you call me home. Christ is my purpose. For, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Again, Paul's desire was to be with God in heaven. But yet to remain in the flesh was more necessary on the churches. And for that matter, not just the church at Philippi, at Philippi but throughout the brotherhood was very necessary to be there as a servant working. Number two, this is the sum, summarization of chapter two, which we find in chapter two, verses five through eight, that Christ is my pattern. Look at chapter two, if you will, for just a moment. Paul writes, have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not, not, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. But notice, verse 7, he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself by coming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. He says, have this mind in you, which is yours in Christ. What a great joy to know that Christ took the form of a servant. In John chapter 1, beginning at verse 1, we, re we read the following. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's Jesus Christ. Jesus was the Word. And in John chapter 1, beginning in verse 14, we find the following, that Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, that of the only begotten, full of grace and truth. The crux of that message was that Jesus came to this earth and became flesh. He took the form of a servant as Paul writes here in Philippians 2. And he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death. Going back to that epistle or that uh, writing in John, Jesus goes to the Garden of Gethsemane with his three, Peter, James, and John, leaving them in the outer area. They, he goes into the innermost port, portion of the garden and prays a prayer saying, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus Christ yielded to the will of his Father and went to the cross and died for our sins to give us the hope of salvation, to give us the hope of eternal life. He took the form of man and humbled himself, becoming obedient, yea, to the point of death on the cross. Notice the third thought, chapter 3. And notice verses 13 and 14 where Paul says, Christ is my pride. Philippians chapter 3, beginning at verse 13, actually starting at verse 12. Not that I've already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brethren, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do. And what does Paul say here? Two things. Number one, forgetting what lies behind, putting everything of the past and putting it to the side, and then doing what? Number two, 
pressing on, straining forward. And I like the, the English Standard Version's re rendering of that, straining forward to what lies ahead. I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You know, if you've watched the Olympic Games or if you've watched a good track and field meet, the highlight of every track and field meet are the, are the runners, the sprinters, the, the distance runners, the hurdlers. And every race that you see of the, that uh, discipline, always note how the runners stretch for the tape there at the finish line. They almost lean their chest out in order to touch that tape to be first in, 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 the, in the race. Sometimes it may even take what they call a photo finish to decide who that winner is because everyone is straining for that finish line. Everyone is straining for the tape to be first in the race. We have a great lesson that we learned from the Hebrew writer that tells us that our Christian race is not a marathon, or it's not a sprint, rather, but it's a marathon. It is a long-distance race. Look at Hebrews chapter 12, and listen to what the Hebrew writer tells us here in this great chapter. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely, and let us run with what? Endurance. Not a short race again. Not a, not, it's not a sprint. But it, it is a long, enduring journey. The race that is set before us. And what does the writer say? Looking to Jesus. Verse 2. The founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was, was set before him, endured himself something. Notice what he endured. Christ endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Notice the Hebrew writer places great emphasis on that term endure or endurance. Just as Christ endured the pain, the bloodshed there on the cross, the nail-scarred hands, the pierced side, we go through a great endurance of trials and tribulations in our life in order to reach the goal, the prize of the calling of G Jesus Christ. Paul writes in 2 Timothy chapter 4, I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith, I have finished the course. Therefore, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give unto me and not unto me only, but unto all who love his appearance. Paul was striving for a great goal in this life. He was putting the past behind him. That's a big trouble for us as, as members of the body of Christ. We can't let go of yesterday. But we need to. We need to put it aside. Forget about it. We can't do anything about the past. We can't change yesterday. Oh, as much as we would love to do it. We've got to be concerned with the here and now. We've got to be concerned about the present life. This life that is happening right now, this very hour, 10 minutes after 11 o'clock, the year 2022. Therefore, we need to put the past behind and reach for the prize, reach for the goal that Paul stretched for, that all the great men of faith and women of faith stretched for as well. Again, our race is not a sprint, but our race is a marathon. And notice also, we must not quit, but go the distance. I've seen great athletes who have hurt themselves in contests shake it off and get back into the action. We cannot let the trivial things of this life, the trivial matters of this life, 
weigh us down. We've got to focus on the, the prize. Stretch our lives for the prize. Run the race. And knowing that that race is on a path that is very narrow, as Jesus stressed in Matthew chapter 7 in the Sermon on the Mount. Not the broad way in which the world strives for. It's an easy path. But the Christian life is not an easy, easy path. But it is a life that is going to give us encouragement and comfort. Why? Because we have the, the Word of God to comfort us. We have the Lord Jesus. We have God that can comfort us. And we are comforted by the Holy Spirit that encourages and guides us. The very gift that Peter promised the church there in Jerusalem in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38. Christ is my prize. And then finally, I'm having trouble getting to the next point here, guys. If you can help me back there, Eric, I would appreciate it. The fourth thing is that Christ is my power. Christ is my power. There we go. Notice what Paul says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 12 through 13. I can do what? All things through Christ, which strengthens me. Thanks be to to God for the church. And thanks to Paul, as Paul thanks the church for the sharing of his troubles. We read in the scripture what Paul endured, had to go through, had to put up with, beaten, left for dead, shipwrecked. But through all of that, he made it through. That was fighting the good fight of faith. That was finishing the course. Paul thanks the church for that sharing of his trials and tribulations. Through all of this, Paul knew the secret of great contentment. Philippians chapter 4 tells us about this great contentment there in verses 12 through 13. I know how to be brought low, Paul writes, and I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, listen, I have learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. That's the secret of contentment. As I said earlier, we can have joy. We can have happiness in this life. But the greatest thing that God wants us to be is content in whatever state we are in. And through all the trials and tribulations that Paul went through as a child of God, as an apostle, as a preacher, as an evangelist, Paul knew where to be and how to be content with God's provisions, God's blessings which are ours to enjoy in this life, we can have. And should those blessings not make us content and satisfied with what we have? What more could we ask in this life than to have the blessings that God has given us, the blessings that God has provided us? We close our lesson with these thoughts. What is Christ to you? Is Christ your purpose in life? Is he the pattern that you follow after, that you strive for in this life? Is he the prize that you covet the most? Is he the power that directs you and guides you and leads you to a state of contentment? He is my everything. He is my all in all. He has given his life for me, made everything new. He is my everything. Now, what about you? You in this audience this morning who have never put Christ on in baptism, 
Today would be a wonderful day. You've heard the message of Christ. You believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Now repent of your sins. Confess your faith of Christ as your Lord and Savior before these witnesses. Let us bury you in baptism for the remission of those sins, to rise, to walk to, in newness of life. And as I like to say always, all things have passed away. You put them behind you. Now everything is new in your life. Let Christ be your all in all. If you are a Christian, you're struggling in this life, you need the prayers of this congregation this morning. Or if you have opportunity, fill out one of our prayer and praise cards. Our elders, elders will be coming down the aisles. They'll pick those cards up. They'll pray with you and for you if need be. Stop them right where you are. And let them pray with you. Whatever desire you have to draw closer to God and to realize that he is your everything, think about it. Do something about it while together we stand and sing. He is my everything. He is my all. He is my everything, both great and small. He gave his life for me, made everything new. He is my everything, now how about you? Some folks may ask me, some folks may say, Who is this Jesus you talk about every day? He is my Savior, he set me free. Now listen while I tell you what he means to me. He is my everything, he is my all. He is my everything, both great and small. He gave his life for me, made everything new. He is my everything, now how about you? So many times we get the chance to sing, to pray, to eat in front of other people. And it makes a big difference. Just a quick one. Last night I reached over and grabbed the hand of somebody I didn't know because I was in the fellowship of a bunch of other people who are Christians. And we prayed. I didn't hear from that person again. But about 45 minutes later, the bride's mom came over and said, that lady really appreciated you including her in to the prayer. Let's do that naturally. Let's share Amen. Christ Amen. every time we can. John, could you lead us? You know, it's hard to adequately express the joy that we have, the love that we have one for another, and the love we have for the men who break the word of God to us. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Shall we go to our Father? Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to meet together unmolested like this, in this land, in this world, and in this heart that we have that's common with you. Father, thank you for your son, which makes all this possible. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made in sending him and that he made in giving his life for each of us. Thank you for the visitors you send our way so that we can show them how much we appreciate you. For your glory, Father, not for our own. Thank you for the, the members who support your work here. Thank you for the brothers and sisters here that create this body. Thank you for the preachers that we have, for the prayers that we have, for the ministers that we have, for the elders that we have, and those who work to do your will here at this location. Help us to understand your will more, further, more fully, more furtherly, if that is such a word. You know what's in my heart more than I can even express. Father, <clears throat> I know that we pray mostly selfish prayers, things that we want, things that we desire, things that would make our lives easier or our friends' lives easier. 
but help that prayer, Father, to be in line with what you have in store for us on this earth. And that you can bring us to the time that we're no longer on this earth, but we're home with you. Again, thank you for the sacrifice your son made, and it's through his name that we ask this. And amen. amen. Please, don't forget your shine group or your study group or your connect group this afternoon. Contact your, uh, your leader to get the, make sure that you're meeting. <laughs>